Welcome to question 7 of the 2017 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Southern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 7 we have let the function f have a domain of 0 to infinity and a rule f of x equals the square root of x plus 1. And for part a we're asked to state the range of f. And it's important to note that the range of f is affected in this case by its restricted domain of 0 to infinity. So for this question we're going to start by sketching a graph of f of x. So over here we have y and x axes. And now if the function wasn't restricted the square root of x plus 1 goes from negative 1 down here and it has a square root shape that would go off in this direction. However, due to the restriction of 0 to infinity, the graph only starts when x is 0, which is this part of the graph. So that's the graph of f of x with its domain restriction, and that point there, the endpoint, is at 0, 1. So by inspecting that graph, we can see the range, which is the y values that come out of the function, are 1 to positive infinity. So that is the answer to part A of this question. From the examiner's report we can see that 65% of students got this question correct and that the students that did get it incorrect often had incorrect use of square or round brackets in their answer. For part B we've now got the function g with a domain of negative infinity to c included with the rule g of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3 where we know that c is a number less than 0. For part 1 of part B, we're asked to find the largest possible value of C such that the range of G is a subset of the domain of F. So we're going to start by looking at the rule G of X, and at the moment it's in the form X squared plus 4X plus 3. However, we're going to factorise this, so we're going to look for the factors of 3 that add up to 4, which means we can write this as X plus 3 times X plus 1. And the reason we needed to do that was so that we could sketch a graph of g of x. So without the domain restriction, it would be a parabola with all real numbers as its domain, and it would have x-intercepts at negative 3 and negative 1 if we used the null factor law. So it would be a graph that looks a little bit like this, negative 3 and negative 1 as the x-intercepts. So this here is negative 3 comma 0, and this point here is negative 1 comma 0. And now we need to find the largest possible values of C such that its range, so the range of G, is a subset of the domain of F. And now previously, the domain of F was identified to be 0 to infinity. And if we did reproduce the sketch we had on the previous slide, the function F looked like this, and that point there was 0, 1. So as G has a domain that goes from negative infinity to C, and we want it to have a range, so the range of G to be a subset or equal to the domain of F, where the domain of F was 0 to infinity. We need this part of the graph here. So that means that C is going to equal negative 3 as the largest possible value, which gives the range of G being a subset of the domain of F. So just to make that really clear, the y values or the range of this function now, if we cut it off here at negative infinity to negative 3, are possible to fit inside the domain of f, which is that yellow line there from 0 to infinity. And now for part 2 of part b, for the value of c found in part bi, state the range of the composite function f of g of x. Now because the range of g of x is identical to the domain of f, we get all of the same values coming out as y values for the function of f. So that means that the range of f of g of x is simply equal to the range of f, which we know is 1 to infinity. So that is the answer to part bii of this question. So from the examiner's report, we can see that 29% of students got the first part of B correct. And students who did successfully solve this question often used an equation, a graph, or both to support their working. For part BII, 
we had 20% of students getting this question correct and overall it was not answered well according to the examiner. And it goes on to say that since negative infinity to negative 3 is the domain of G, the range of G is the same as the domain of F, which is the discussion we had before. Hence, in this particular case, the range of F of G of X is exactly the same as the range of F, which meant that 1 to infinity was the correct answer to that question. For part C of this question, we now have the function H with a domain of all real numbers and a rule of h of x equals x squared plus 3. We're still working with the original function f, which had the rule f of x equals the square root of x plus 1. And for this question, we're now asked to state the range of f of h of x. So just so we have them on this slide, here are sketches of these graphs. So for f, which we've done in blue in the past, it started here and looked like this, and this point was 0, 1. Next we can do the function h, which we will do in purple. So it is simply a parabola translated 3 up, so it looks like this, and has a turning point and minimum point here at 0, 3. And using this information we can now work out what the range of the composite function f of h of x is. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. The first way that we could do it is we could look at the range of h of x, so all the numbers that come out of h of x. And we can see that all the numbers that come out of h of x are 3 or more. So if we take the number 3 and we put that into f of x, we have the square root of 3 plus 1 is the square root of 4, which gives 2 out. So if we put all numbers from 3 included to infinity, which is what the range of h of x is, into f of x, we'll get all numbers from 2 included to positive in infinity. Another way of doing this is a little bit more algebraic, where we would have f of h of x, which would give us the rule the square root of, and wherever there's an x, we're going to replace it with h of x, so that's x squared plus 3 and then we'd still have a plus one here, which is part of the rule of f of x. So therefore, f of h of x is simply equal to the square root of x squared plus four. And we can see that the smallest value that we get out from underneath the square root sign is four, and that's when x is zero. So we have the smallest y value is the square root of four, which is two. So either way, we find that the range of f of h of x is 2 included to positive infinity. So that is the answer to part c of this question. And from the examiner's report we can see that 30% of students got that correct and that the examiner goes on to say that most students could identify the composite function, so the rule of it, but did struggle with determining its range either because they couldn't interpret what the rule was giving them or they couldn't work through what values were coming out of h of x and what that would lead to in terms of the y values of f of x once it was a composite function.